Okay, we're going to be making hexagons, crocheted hexagons. They look like this. Um, you can make them whatever size you want to make them. I'll show you the pattern to do it. Uh, I'm making them out to uh, it's about two and a half, two to two and a half inches per side, um, six sides. And then the idea is I'm going to piece them all together. Once I, I haven't weaved in any of the ends yet. I'm going to piece them all together, kind of like this. And they'll end up a blanket shaped like a honeycomb. And I'm going to do um, a raised edge when I, when I stitch them together. I kind of give it that depth like a honeycomb would be. So I'll show you how to do it now. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is a, a, a crochet hook or needle, depending on who you talk to. This is a Boy. I've never used this brand before. Uh, I just got it the other day. So far, I'm liking it. It's a G hook or 4.25 millimeters. And I got it at Walmart for um, just under $4. So I it's Pretty comfortable so far. I'm used to using a uh, just a plain metal hook, which works. It's just when you start crocheting for a long time, your fingers get a little tired sometimes. So this is nice, a little little cushion. Uh, and I'm using this Red Heart Super Saver yarn. It's pretty cheap. I think this was about two or three dollars maybe for a skein. Uh, and most of them have a pattern on the back. This one's got a hat, which is cool, but I'm just using it because I like the yellow. Um, and it's bright yellow. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is to fix my yarn. Okay, got my yarn untangled. I uh, usually it doesn't do that sometimes. Every once in a while it'll do it though. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna start off with your tail end. And I found all of these, the, the magic ring. This is the magic ring. It's the, the heart of this crochet project. Figured out how to do this by watching um, Crochet Guru, and I will tag her on YouTube. She's excellent, talks you through it. So I'm using her technique. I'm pretty sure it was hers. Uh, you take your tail, put it over your fingers facing you, put your thumb down to hold it in place, and then you're going to wrap the, the yarn around, the working end around, and then hold it at the bottom. You're going to take your hook under and then around and twist. Once you get that up, Come to your back side and then grab and pull through. Then I let go and then I'm going to chain twice. One, two, okay. Then I'm going to work in the direction of this tail from the magic ring. And I'm going to tighten it just a hair. So I'm going to do a double chain or double stitch so around under and through I'm gonna go through the first two stitches here and then again and now I'm gonna chain twice and then double Double again. Chain twice. Double again. Go 
another double. So the pattern here is two doubles, two chains, two doubles, two chains. And you, you wanna do that until you have six sides. So what's gonna end up happening, and I'll show you on this one, <laughs> is these are the doubles as you work your way out, which ends up being the long side here. And then the chains end up being these little, little holes in between the two sides here. And there's your magic circle right in the middle. So we'll keep going here. And then I can, I can quickly look back at what I've done. So I've got my two doubles here, one, two. So I need to do two chains. I like this pattern a lot because it's once you figure it out, and, and it did take me a second to figure it out, but once I figured it out, it was super easy. And you can make these hexagons as big as you want. You can make them as small as you want. You can make them teeny tiny if you really wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to, but you could. Um, but it's just it's a really simple pattern, and once you once you get it going, again it's it's just simple. It's easy. I like it. And I can set it down. I, I just went on a car ride and um, it was stop and go and I didn't have to be like, hold on, let me finish this row or anything like that. I just set it down, pick it up, and you can figure out where you were, count your stitches if you have to, which if you do, not a big deal. Um, there's not too many to count in between. But um, it just made it easy. So I'm going to go back and count how many I have so far. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So I need to do one more of my double, double stitch set. Okay. So. And then I'm going to end with a double chain. And there's two ways you can do this. I'm going to just show you the one that I do. But I'm just going to take... I'm, I hold the last double stitches here with my thumb. Make sure this is untangled on this end because we're going to tighten the magic ring now. Okay, so I just hold here loosely and then I'm going to pull on the, the loose end the tail end until it's nice and tight and tuck that back behind for now <coughs> and then to connect these two here you should have your double chain which will give you that nice loop in between the, the double stitches is you're just going to do a slip chain to connect to that last one over there and that's your first row first row done uh, I'll show you how to expand on it and then once you get that you can just go through the entire one or the entire hexagon make it as big or small as you want and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to finish it off so for to start the next row you always want to start with three chains okay so we're gonna chain one chain two chain three okay and then we're going to do a double stitch through the double stitch from your first row. Okay. And then, so there's one, two. So for your first row, you ended up with two double, double chains or double stitches. In your second row, you're going to end up with four and then six and then eight and then ten. So it goes up by two for every row you do. Okay, so you have two so far. Your next one is going to be through your double chain or your two chains from your first row. So I'll show you here. So you're going to go through that double chain for your double stitch. And then you're going to do a two chain. One, two. And then you're going to go back through that, that double chain again. And that's going to be your first double stitch 
for your next side here. And then do double stitches across the side here. And then do double stitches across. And then through that ring again from your double chain. And then there you go. One, two, three, four. So you'll notice that you still only have three from your first uh, on your second row, from your first set on your second row. We'll actually end up doing going through this, this double chain here um, when we join at the end of this row, and I'll show you how that ends up happening. But you'll actually have another stitch here when it comes to the end. So that's that's pretty much the basics right now. And again, I'll I'll come back. We'll speed through, and so you can see how I'm doing the rest. But um, that's that's the basis of this entire pattern. And I'll I will link the pattern <clears throat> in the in the description. Or I'll I'll get Mike to do it for me because he does all the videos for me. I just record them. Um, I'll put the pattern down there and I'll put the links to the the yarn and and the, the hook and stuff that I use or for this product specifically. I've noticed it takes me roughly half an hour to do one one hexagon so not too bad considering however I uh, I'm doing a well the plan is a lap blanket um, oh, I almost did one too many uh, the plans a lap blanket so I'm guessing it's gonna take about 60 hexagons that's a guess. I haven't measured anything yet. Um, I don't generally measure stuff, which I know that's <laughs> that's a big no-no for most people. Um, but I don't. I just go by. Oh, this looks about the right size for me. This is what I want. However, I don't I don't do any mass producing or anything like that. So I don't need that um, that standard size. Um, this is just for me. <laughs> so. I'm guessing about 60 hexagons though, and I have, here we go, this many so far, and I don't even know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen hexagons. I started last week, not too many. However, that road trip did help. Got a few more done then, so that was nice. Um, and I can't, I can't tell you yet how many I get per skein because I actually had a skein of this yellow for some pot holders that I made. Um, so I just finished what was left on that one for a bunch of these. And then I have another one going over here that I started on earlier. Um, but I wanted to show you from the start on this video. <clears throat> okay, so again, it's gonna take me about half an hour to get to the end, but that's the same concept. And I'll show you the start of the, or the end of the second row and the start of the third row. And then I'll, I'm just gonna speed through the video. And then I'll show you how to close at the very end. Okay, so um, four stitches there. So again, okay, two chains. See how quickly I could figure out where I was. It was nice. As long as you're paying attention to what row you're on. Then you know how many stitches you need. Makes it easy. And I am having a time with my yarn today.
And I am definitely, mm, definitely not a professional crocheter by any means, as you can tell. Um, but I do enjoy it, and I have since, you know, since high school. And one of my friends was crocheting, and I kind of picked it up, and then I've watched, you know, look, read some books, watched some videos here and there, and I really enjoy it. Okay, so now I'm at the end of the second row, and then the start of the third. So I have my, my four double stitches here, and then I have three double stitches on this side. Okay, so I've done my four double stitches, I'm doing two chains, and then again, I'm just gonna connect it with a slip stitch on this last, oh, no, not yet, see? I almost messed it up. I need one more of my double stitch. So, I'm gonna do my double stitch again. And then, I'm gonna do a slip stitch. Come on. There, just like that. And that's the end of your second row. One, two, three, four, double stitches, see? So you've got two, then four. Our next row will have six. And you can already see where the hexagon is starting to really get its shape. It's nice. Okay, so again, to start every row, after you finish your, your previous row with that slip stitch, you're gonna chain three. So, one, two, three. And then we're just gonna keep going now. We're gonna do the double chains until we get to the corners. Now I'm at the corner, so I'm gonna double stitch, and I keep saying double chain, double stitch, I'm sorry, through the ring, <clears throat> that double chain from before. Uh, and then we're gonna double chain, or two chains. And then again through that two chain from the previous row. And then that's it, that's that's the entire pattern. That's how you keep going. And I'm just gonna, now I'll speed through the video <clears throat> and um, show you how I finish it off when I get to that. Sorry about that. My dog needed to come back inside. <laughs> um, so you'll probably hear his nails clicking around. Again, I'd like to point out how easy it was just to pick it, set it down, go take care of business, come back, pick it right back up and get going.
Okay, so I'm at the end of my, my third row now. And I have I should have six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there's my double chain. So this is the one stitch for my last side here. And you'll see one, two, three, four there. So four plus one is five. So I need one more stitch to complete that row. Okay, and this will continue as you continue your rows. So you'll end up doing more stitches on this side to finish off that last row. So that's the one thing you really need to pay attention to. You're doing this. And then finish that row off with that slip stitch. Okay, so now you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, bam. Six on each side, like a nice and hex hexagonal. Okay. Maybe my yarn will stop giving me trouble now. That's three chains. And then continue with the double stitches. So I can show you now. So again, we've got two, two double stitches for our first row, four for our second, six for our third, and we should have eight for our fourth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. We're looking good. And I will end up doing uh, one more. I end on, I, I shut it off <laughs> um, after I've got 10 um, for my last row. I just, that seems like a good size to me. I don't want to go much bigger than that, but if I go, really, if I go less than that, it's just a lot more work. Uh, so this seems about, about the right size for me. And again, you can go whatever size you really want. If you want to make just one huge hexagon for um, like a table setting or a centerpiece or... Uh, I don't know, a coffee table, something or other. <laughs> you can get creative with them. I just, I like bees, we're beekeepers. And I was like, there's gotta be a cool like bee blanket I can make. And uh, I saw a picture of, well, one that looked just like kind of what I was wanting. It's uh, just looked like honeycomb. And then I had a couple of like applique bees in it or something, I think, but I was really like, oh my God, honeycomb, that's perfect. And it's so pretty. And it looked really easy, which is perfect for me since I don't know a whole lot of, I, uh, when I started crocheting, I didn't know how to read patterns. So now that, um, I'm older. I was like, this is dumb. I know the stitches, the basic stitches, but I can't, I just come up with patterns on my own because I don't know how to read them. And that's really obnoxious and doesn't make sense. So I was like, okay, I gotta figure out how to read them. And it's not difficult. It's not, it really isn't. But it did take me some getting used to, but um, it was perfect because I found a pattern. And again, I'll link it um, below, but um, I found this pattern for this gorgeous hexagons that this lady pieced together to make this hexagonal honeycomb blanket. And it was gorgeous and beautiful and I wanted it. So I uh, figured out how to put those crazy looking um crazy looking words and all of that into that so here is the pattern and again i'll put it below and i'll link the website where i found it um so you just have that stuff like magic ring which i've been crocheting now for a few years um and i didn't know what it was and if you don't know what it is figure it out again i showed you in the beginning but crochet guru is an excellent teacher slows it down really well it's nice but then you have like chain one to secure magic loop then chain two more double chain in magic loop chain two and I, I mean some people can read patterns and get it like no problem i'm not one of those people I figured that one out however once i i read it and i messed up a couple of times i finally was like ah oh, you know that aha moment so i just and then i just got it i'm like once you get two or three um rounds done oh my goodness it's like where has this been all of my life super easy and wonderful and so pretty We're trying to post more videos i'm sure some of you have noticed that <laughs> and um i mean they'll be about you still but maybe something maybe more of ones that are kind of like this where they expand out a little bit to some of the, the things that we do well for bees or about bees or, oh, sorry that's rascal sounding vicious And again, I'm at the end of my row now. I'm going to confirm that I have eight, which I do. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need two more. And slip stitch. Bam. Okay. And I have my four and four. That's eight. Now I'm going to start my next row with my 
three chains. Okay, I think I finally got my yarn situated <laughs> now that I'm almost done with this one. Never had that much trouble. It's frustrating. Okay. Now, again, we're at the last last of the row and I'm going to confirm my stitches. There's 10, as there should be. Six, seven, so I need three more. Wait, no, I gotta do my two chains first. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, okay. Two my my two chains, then my double. So yeah, I even get thrown off sometimes. And then I'm gonna recount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, then I'm going to slip stitch to join, and I'm going to cut off uh, a good tail, so I don't know, five inches or so. Again, I don't generally measure. And then with this tail, I'm going to make like I'm going to do a single chain, but instead of stopping there, I'm going to pull all the way through, and then I'm just going to tighten it down. Okay, and if your magic ring, magic circle, loosen up a little bit more, you want to tighten it down, you can just give it a quick yank on the tail again. Um, and then for now, that's all I'm doing. Uh, once I get enough of my, my hexagon shapes, granny squares, done, then I will, I will go through and I'll weave in all my loose ends and before I stitch them all together. And for now, that's that's it. I also, I, I've been reading crochet blogs lately. Um, <clears throat> with granny squares, I found out that blocking is key. So, with the blocking, and I haven't done this before, so bear with me. I got this knit, uh, garden kneeling pad from the dollar store. Okay, and I got these uh, wooden round dowels from um, Walmart. This was a dollar, this was, these were less than a dollar for the entire pack. So, pretty nice. And then, basically what they said to do was take one of your shapes, whatever it is, insert these dowels into the garden kneeling pad and try and keep them straight up and down. And I'm going kind of across from each other just because I know whenever I use my pressure canner, that's the ideal. <clears throat> and I'm pulling just a, a hair. I don't I don't exactly know if I'm doing this correctly, <laughs> honestly. Um, haven't done it before blocking, but I've heard it definitely helps keep all of the squares and the um, the same nice straight 
dimensions. So we'll see. And then um, what I also read was that if you have a uh, water, like spray bottle, and just kind of spritz them. And then you just keep, whoop, my light here. Sorry, I'm trying not to get in the video. Um, and then you just put the, the next round over the dowels, just like how the first one, there we go. And then that just slides down. So that's the idea. We'll see how it works. But um, they just quick little spray with a water bottle. And then I think they said to leave it for like like 24 hours. So uh, that's the plan for later. I'm not going to finish doing that now. But I am going to go work on another project. And then we'll go from there. 